Yo, YouTube, what's up? Welcome back to another video right here on Free Will Photos. Today, we're gonna to be talking about culling your images or selecting your images. Now, this video, it goes hand in hand with the podcast that was released today. So if you're interested in that, please go check that out over uh, the uh, podcast platform that you choose, be it Apple Podcasts or Spotify, whatever. Link to the anchor.fm page is in the, in the description of this video as well. So uh, check it out. And if you're new here, consider hitting the subscribe button. Here at Free Will Photos, we generate, or I generate, uh, videos use, teaching new photographers how to use software uh, to edit their photos. So that way you can go further and get your creative vision out. So let's dive into the computer and talk about culling. Okay, so here we are in On One Photo Raw 2021, and I have a picture, uh, a set of pictures that I took at a place called Kramer's Field. Now, uh, I have not gone through and done anything with this particular set other than I backed up all of my photos. All right. I talk about that in the podcast. So if you want to know more about that, check that out. But today, what I want to show you is kind of the process that I've developed for myself. And hopefully maybe you guys can develop one for yourself. So the first thing that you want to do or the first thing I like to do is I like to come over to advanced search in on one. What that helps me with is really honing in on uh, the images because typically I shoot JPEG and raw. So what I like to do is come over here, uh, hit advanced search, click the advanced drop down and then hit file type. And then right here I would select raw and this gets me just my raw images. Uh, before I would go here, I would go to JPEG and then I would select all of them. As you can see this day, I did not shoot JPEG. So there's no JPEGs for me to get to, which is great because I can go to raw. And that's my very first step is to separate my JPEGs from my raws. Once I have that, the way that I like to call and everyone is going to be a little bit different is I choose this particular view. Uh, I don't know what it's called, but the photo pops up in the middle as soon as it gets there. Sorry, my computer's moving slow. Okay, so the photo pops up in the middle and then you have your film strip down here at the bottom. And I like to call using the, uh, the opt-in, right? So, I'm not looking for the bad things. I'm looking for what I actually like in the photo. And if I can't find anything that I like, I skip to the next one, right? Uh, this is going to save me a ton of time. Now, you can, I like to hit the little heart button. Uh, I don't really, I'm not fond of on one's uh, selection method. It's either a heart or an X. And to me, a heart means it's my favorite, but that's perfectly fine. This is just how on one works, right? So uh, I use my keyboard for most of this, right? So I use my right arrow. Uh, don't like anything in that photo, move over. Don't like anything in that photo, move over. Don't like anything in that photo, move over, nothing. And I'm using my imagination of what would I do with this photo? So right now it's just a ton of snapshots. I kind of like the way that that bird is, uh, you know, moving through the frame with its wings spread, but that is gonna be a hard sell. Uh, that bird landing, I like that. And I'm just hitting the letter P and moving on to the next photo. My job is to find the things that I do like, okay? So I'm just going to fast forward through the video and get to what I would do as my second step of calling. One of the things that I did not mention and I probably should have mentioned is down here where it says raw previews Instead of it being on accurate, 
you should put it on fast. This is going to pop up that JPEG a lot faster and it's going to give you a quick idea of what the image is going to look like. It's not going to have any of the true tones or colors. So my computer was moving slow because it's trying to pull all of that information. So what I'm going to do is change this right now because I think my computer is responding. Real life world, uh, real life issues when it comes to photo editing. If this happens to you, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, if not, hey, good for you having a, a better computer than me. Um, man. So I'm going to fast forward again until I get this back to fast. There we go. Now, let's proceed with the culling. Okay, so now that we're done with all of the, uh, the initial scrub of culling, I want to see only the photos that I picked, so that way I can choose the ones that I really like, and then I'll eventually go to an editing uh, with them. So I'm gonna hit the little heart over here after I turn on advanced search, I'll hit the heart, and what that's going to do is filter through all of those photos and only choose the ones that I pick. Again, I work on a editing in culling process or a selection process. And I recommend you do that as well because it helps with your creativity when it comes down to choosing which photo I want to edit. Now, I'm at 22 total. I can't remember. Let me see how many were in there before. 211. All right, so I went from 211 images to 22 images. Now, in this particular instance, most of those photos were out of focus. So even though I like the composition, I wasn't able to really get the subject uh, in tune the way that I wanted. So probably wasn't gonna work out, all right? But now that I have the 22 images, uh, this is where you have to ask the question, what is the best package that I can deliver to the client or what is it that I'm looking to do for myself? Uh, this may be all you need to do. Going from 211 to 22 images, it's like, okay, this is manageable. I can look through this and figure out which ones I want to edit. But let's assume that I'm working for a wildlife magazine, which I'm not because this would be terrible. But what I need to do now is find photos that tell a story about these birds, I don't know what type of birds there are. I know there's some ducks in there. And if you know what these birds are, please drop it in the comment section below. All right. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and assume that I'm working for or pretend that I'm working for a wildlife uh, magazine. And they wanted to see some of these images and tell a story for a spread. Uh, so I'm going to say that they're only looking for four images. Now, what I'm going to do is go back into my same view because I want to be able to see the image, uh, but I like these flying images here, right? So I'm going to select both of them. And then I'm going to enter into my compare mode because I want to see these images side by side to determine which one I actually want to throw into the editing. All right. Um, and this is where your particular style will vary. However you choose to do this is going to be 100% up to you. I particularly like the photo on the right, uh, mostly because I get some shadow under the wing and you can tell that the bird is flying and it also looks to be the most in focus. So what I'm going to do is on that particular photo, I'm going to hit one star. One star lets me know that this is a photo that I need to edit. All right. And then I'm going to go to my next set of photos. So now I'm looking at this as, okay, what is it that these birds are doing? Uh, I want to have some inclusion of ducks and let them know that there were a series of ducks out there or a group of ducks. So again, I'm going to go with the second photo, one star. I know that I need to edit that because I'm going to have to deliver that to my editor at the magazine. 
So now I'm going to select the next two images. Uh, I like the photo of this particular, I think it's a crane. I like that the crane is more uh, pronounced and extended in this particular frame. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that one and so forth and so on. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these for the sake of this video because I think you guys understand what it is that I'm trying to do here to get to a final selection of images that I want to edit. Now, again, I only have 22. I really like this photo. If it's in focus, and I don't know if it is. Let me click on it. This is one of those things that you also want to do in calling. And it looks like he's actually in pretty decent focus. So I'm going to go ahead and hit a star on that one. So now I have all of my images that I'm ready to edit. What I do next is I hit the star icon over here and I go back to grid view. And now I have four images that I'm going to put into this series for my editor at the magazine. Uh, bottom line, the way that you choose to call is something that you have to develop for yourself. It gets faster and faster with time. And honestly, I probably would have gone a lot faster had I not been uh, talking about what my process is. Once I have these images and I know that they're ready to go, I do want to mention one last thing. And, and this is not necessarily a part of the calling process. This is just a part of organization for me. What I like to do is select all of the images and then over here, I'll add in keywords. So for this one, I went to a place called Kramer's Field. And that was in Alaska. If you've never been to Alaska, it's a beautiful, beautiful state. You should take a trip. Uh, I like the winter in Alaska, as ironic as that sounds. But if you go somewhere April, you'll probably uh, have a really nice experience in Alaska because there's no such thing as spring. It's all winter up until May, really. But uh, if you go in April, you'll really enjoy it. Uh, so Kramer's Field, Alaska, and I'm going to put birds, right? And I would probably also uh, keyword this to match the magazine that I'm working for. But that's all I'm going to do for now. And yes, I want to change the metadata for all of these uh, photos. So now whenever I click on them and I need to recall them, I know what I'm doing. This is where you'd probably put the client name and you know that you and then I would also even add in edit ready, right? You don't have to do that. Um, what just happened? I don't know why there is a comma in the front there. All right. Uh, you don't have to do that, but it's something that I recommend that you do and you get into the habit of because you're going to need to find your photos later and recall them. So adding in the metadata early in your workflow really, really helps out. Okay. So there you have it. That's how I call my images and, you know, gave you some insight. Choose your method wisely. However, I will suggest that one, you choose a method that you can do on a consistent basis. Two, you choose how you organize your photos up front after you, uh, like immediately after you've backed up your images onto your hard drive, how are you going to organize your photos so that way you can select them later? And then three, just make sure that you have a system that makes sense to your workflow and you'll be able to find your images later on down the line and then be able to deliver them to your client or edit them. Uh, don't put too much pressure on yourself for the calling and don't don't spend too much time on your first pass. Uh, my first pass I'm really just looking for and I suggest you are looking for does this picture have some sort of inspiration from when I originally took it. Again more information on calling in the podcast you can find that link in the description box below uh, if that's something that you want to check out. If you found this video helpful, please smash that like button. And if you're new to the uh, channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button uh, where 
you know, you'll be a part of the family here at Free Will Photos. And I, I just want to help give back. So until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.